Hey friends, welcome to Midweek. We're glad that you're joining with us as we continue our series called The Devil's Playbook. Now in this series, we've identified kind of a key verse that really encapsulates this whole concept, and it comes from 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. Um, where it says that Satan is is using three tactics, three overarching themes in which we fall into sin. And every sin that you struggle with will fall under one of these categories. The, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And so every sin that you have is going to be uh, under one of those umbrellas, right? And so in this series, what we're doing is trying to take an offensive look by knowing his playbook. Now that we know those three elements and some of the characteristics about the many names he has through scripture, which there are 24, um, we've been talking about him being a deceiver, being an accuser, but tonight isn't necessarily a name that he has, but it's definitely an attribute that he carries. And it's the title of confusion, right? He brings confusion to the table. And I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but I know that we all live life long enough to be under confusion. And my guess is, is that in the middle of it and maybe after it, the last thing that you would expect is that confusion is a part of spiritual warfare, but it certainly is. And, and we're going to prove it by talking about what the Bible says about confusion. Now, like I said, we've all been there. We've all struggled with this concept. And oftentimes I'll get people coming to me when there's major life decisions that need to be made. And here's the, here's the thing about Satan is this, the, the things that he brings to the table to add the confusion aren't necessarily bad things, right? I mean, think of a major decision you had to make and you were just conflicted because of the confusion that came behind this. You know, maybe it's it's buying a new vehicle or a new house. Maybe it's moving locations. Maybe it's getting a different job or you're going into a different career field. And that's terrifying, especially when you get to like my age and you feel like you've already invested so much time into something. And then all of a sudden you feel like I need to switch because maybe this isn't what God has called me to. And you start to overwhelm yourself and confusion comes and none of these decisions are necessarily bad. But what Satan does is he, in the middle of a good thing, may add a bunch of other good things to get you so distracted from you, what you know is the right thing to do. And you oftentimes find yourself just kind of lost in all of that. I've been there. I know you have too. So how do you handle that? I know when people come to me for counseling with things like that, like, hey, I'm overwhelmed with this decision. I don't know what to do. I've talked to my wife. She doesn't know what to do. I've talked to my husband. He doesn't know what to do. And we're really just struggling with, with trying to find some sort of right way to go. And oftentimes I'll answer and I'll respond with this. Which decision is going to bring you the most peace? Because if it's a decision that's going to bring the most peace and you've kind of analyzed all the details and this is the one that you feel is going to bring the most peace for you and for your family, my guess is that's the direction you probably should go because confusion does not come from God. And I want to prove it to you. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and uh, it's verse 33. And here's what it says. This is what it says verbatim. For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. And so this is one of those verses that we kind of overlook sometimes when we're reading through the scriptures. Uh, because when it says point blank that God is not a God of confusion, that means that whenever you feel like a big decision's coming and you're overwhelmed by being confused by it, you can already know for a fact that's not coming from God. Right? That's not coming from God. Now, God may be calling you to something and Satan is just adding some weight to decisions in there when you know that this is the right thing to do, uh, but you're just kind of bogged down by how this could affect other people or all this other stuff, blah, 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 blah. And it just becomes overwhelming. Um, and so maybe you know the right decisions, but it's all the aftermath that brings the confusion. So, and those kind of things, you got to navigate kind of lightly so you don't get kind of entangled in all of that. But God is not a God of confusion. And this is fantastic news because when you start to get overwhelmed and you feel like you're just awfully confused about something, you can already recognize that that's not from God. That's got to be from the enemy. But Brandon, the decisions, it's appealing. They seem to be good. There's nothing bad in there. That may be true, but God does not work in the realm of confusion. For instance, with our life, when Jess and I were trying to decide whether or not we want to move back to this area from the ministry that we were at about four, four hours away, um, I took I took to Jess and I said, listen, uh, I'm going to pray about this solo. I want you to be praying about this on your own with God. And then we're going to get together in about three weeks and we're going to talk about this again. 
And if God's trying to lead me this direction, but he's not bringing you with me, that's not peace. That's confusion, right? And I just want to make sure that God's laying this on both of our hearts so that when we come back to this area, when we come back home, closer to our family, our parents, everything like that, things are going to be peaceful. Um, and the decision to do that came from this verse, that God is not a God of confusion. And so thankfully for us, we, we came together, we made that decision, and we've been at peace ever since. But I want to talk about America real quick, because I read this article maybe a week or two ago that talks about America has the most fast food drive throughs in anywhere else in the world combined. And that really intrigued me. And the whole article was just talking about how busy the American culture is, how busy we are, and just having to go from here to there, that we rarely even sit at the dinner table anymore. I don't know what it looks like in your house, but I know when I look at my week and we are just on the go constantly, we may have two days out of a seven-day week where we actually have time together at home. And it's not that we're with, it's not that we're absent from each other, it's just we're on the go. We've got dance, we've got sports, we've got church, we've got all of these things that are kind of blended in. And so fast food, especially drive throughs have become quite convenient for the American lifestyle. But like the McDonald's and stuff overseas, they don't have drive throughs in a lot of those because the culture is to come in and dine with your family. But we've become so busy in America that it just kind of adds to this element. Do you think that that's by accident? I mean, look at the way our culture is shifting, where we're constantly busy, moving, 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 to where we are um, trying to, to lessen our relationship with God by trying to diminish the connection we have with God. Do you think that that's by accident? I don't, because this adds to this element of confusion. And so oftentimes when we try to gather together and collect our thoughts or we get biblical and we try to go to the Lord in prayer or even read our Bible, all of a sudden we're just overwhelmed with this idea of confusion. We get distracted, we get blocked, we get hindered. All the things that the Bible says Satan uses in his arsenal to confuse you. And specifically talking about um, people who aren't of Christ it says that the mystery of the gospel is, is being hindered, like Satan has literally put blinders on. Just look at what, what Paul writes. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, right? This is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and this is what he says. Um, we'll start, uh, let's just read and start with verse 1. Therefore, having the ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the light of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is not veiled only to those who are perishing. Here it is. In the case of the God of this world, oh, I'm sorry. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from uh, seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of God. Did you catch that? Verse 4 in chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians. What he's saying is that Satan not only is the confusing one, the one who brings confusion to the table, but he's also blinding people from knowing the word of God. And so that's why sometimes when you have these conversations with people who uh, specifically aren't Christians, maybe they claim another religion or a different faith, you have a hard time connecting the dots with them. And you look at them and you start to wonder, how are you not getting this concept? How do you not understand what God is doing for you? And it's just, they just choose not to accept it. The reason being is because Satan has blinded them from knowing the truth. So no matter what they hear, no matter what they see, what they read, Satan is distorting that news so that they just will not comprehend it. And it's frustrating when we're trying to bring them to Jesus, but this gives you a deeper heart of compassion for them. And friends, I want to make this clear that there are people who probably sit in the pews of your church who are blinded by the enemy. And we're not having conversations with them and we're not trying to bring them in because we all go to church, we sit in the pew and then we leave and we go home. We've made church our fast food service, our drive through And we've lost the sense of fellowship. And there are people sitting next to us who have become blinded, blinded by the enemy, who have become confused by the enemy, and they have no peace in their life. And they have no idea how to reach out for help because they don't even realize that they're under spiritual attack. That's how deceptive confusion can become. And Satan is a master at this. 
And so what we need to do is we need to start shining the light of the gospel to those by bringing peace into their life and maybe just adding a conversation in someone's week, maybe inviting them to the table, to your table, um, to a restaurant where you can dine together as a family, bringing families together so that we can help aid in bringing peace to a lost, confusing world. And hopefully those blinders become unveiled and that they start to see the truth that is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what Paul is trying to do. He's trying to break the confusion by bringing clarity to who Jesus is, because that is the most important thing, is to get people to understand who he is first and foremost, and watch how God removes the blinders. So friends, Satan is an enemy and he is on the prowl. And if you are ever dealing with confusion or you're ever reading your Bible and you just feel like you're not getting it, or you're just finding yourself too busy to even spend a moment with God in prayer, I want you to treat this as if it's spiritual warfare and ask God to reveal to you or to to remove what's blinding you from the truth so that you can stay focused on this. And the last thing I wanna say is we need to start creating the margin in our busy lives. We have to. Right? We have to start creating the margin in our life to make room for us to start spending time with God. Because if we just say we're going to do it, it'll never happen. We almost have to make an appointment to make sure at this time, on this day, this is when we're going to get into the Word of God. This is when I'm going to pray because it is that serious. And when you go to God in prayer and you go to read His Word, ask Him to remove the blinders from your eyes so that the truth can be known to you as well. And that's how you deal with confusion on a spiritual level. We look forward to seeing you next time, guys.